November 24th. From the cradle to the grave, football borders on religion in the state of Alabama. This timeless phenomenon solidified some 70 years ago. It was during the Depression of 1929 and on into the 30s when the hopeless Alabama citizens looked with pride towards the great Crimson Tide teams. In this era, Wallace Wade and Frank Thomas won four national championships, soothing the desperate times. When America rebounded, Alabama football continued to be the toast of the upper crust. The state's doctors, lawyers, and bankers sent their children on to Tuscaloosa to be educated. Auburn University was an agricultural and engineering school, attracting the state's middle class. Auburn always felt it was being shunned by the University of Alabama followers, and Auburn knew the one place to gain respect from Tuscaloosa was on the football field. For the past 40 years, these social wars have been settled on a battleground in Birmingham. These two teams have met on the last weekend of their seasons to settle 364 days of impassioned arguments over who has the better team and the better way of life. When Alabama and Auburn play, the goal is to win, but the fear is of losing and having to tolerate your arch rival fans and their incessant torture for an entire year. People said it would never happen. Today, it will happen. Second-ranked Alabama against 11th-ranked Auburn. In Auburn for the first time ever. Well, the weather today is in the mid-50s as we welcome you in to Jordan-Hare Stadium. Cold and cloudy. However, it should be duly noted that just moments ago, the clouds parted overhead and blue sky was above as we get started for Alabama and Auburn. Auburn has won the toss and elected to receive. So Philip Doyle will kick, standing at the goal line. For Auburn is Alexander Wright. Wright from the five. Oh, he's hammered at the 32-yard line. Lorenzo Ward on the tackle. A jarring hit to start it out. And out comes the Auburn offense, guided by Reggie Slack. In the backfield, Alex Strong and Stacy Danley, the starters today. Wright, the return man, and the deep threat. Greg Taylor, the possession receiver for Auburn. Stacy Danley, number 32, will be the tailback. He will alternate today with James Joseph and Darrell Williams. Right away, Slack's pass caught. Greg Taylor and a first down for Auburn, a gain of 12. Alabama nose tackle is Willie Wyatt, the senior from Gardendale, Alabama. On that defensive line, Thornton and Rayum. The linebackers for the tie, John Sullivan and the great one, Keith McCants, along with Steve Webb and Spencer Hammond. From the 44, first and 10, Auburn. Slack. A gain of six to Alexander Wright. Auburn opens with back-to-back -back passes. And Jim Auburn believes they can actually run the ball straight at them behind this offensive line. John Hudson, who's had a very nice year at center. Ed King, one of the best in the country at guard. And Brad Johnson and Brown and Selby are the tackles, along with the tight end, Victor Hall, who's had a very nice year. Second down and six. Stacy Danley, only a yard. Tackled by Willie Wyatt. Willie Wyatt, number 98 there, is a nightmare for centers. You think about him all week long if you're a center and you have to go against him. 
He has that, that kind of year. Four years he has started at Alabama. In four years, he's come up with big plays in the Auburn game. Bill Curry says you can make a case for Wyatt being our most viable player this year. Third and five for the Tigers. Looking for Alexander Wright. Complete. with Ephraim Thomas. First and goal for the Tigers. Slack does a good job getting it away. He was getting pressure from Spencer Hammond. And let's meet now the secondary for Alabama. Mangum and Ephraim Thomas. On the corners, the safeties, Lee Osmond Mitt, and Charles Gardner. Bill Curry in his third year at Alabama looking for his first win over Auburn. And Pat Dye. His team second and goal from the seventh. Stacy Danley. Just short. Stacy Danley says about himself, he says, hey, I'm a power runner. I don't dip and dodge much. But you give me a little crease and I'll find it. He's a big guy, big back, 215 pounds. And this is where you want to run him when you get down inside the 10 yard line. And he nearly brings this one in. The knee was down, a good call, just short of the goal line. Now, just inches shy, it's third and goal from the one. James Joseph comes in, the extra tight end is Autry. Touchdown, Auburn. Joseph over the top, and Auburn drives right down the field for an opening score. Win Lyle now with the extra point. He drills it. 7-0 Auburn. And a big push by the offensive line really cleared the way for James Joseph. But Jim, this was a terrific drive by the Auburn Tigers. They came out throwing the football. They showed finesse early on. But when they had to get the ball in the end zone, they gave you a lot of power right over the center's block, John Hudson. Oh, nice ball, Walter. Only the Fairley brothers, the directors of There's Something About Mary. Hey, you guys are stuck together. And Shallow Hal awesome. could make a film about brothers. This close. I'm not going another step until you apologize. Don't you walk away from me. Yeah, you better run. Matt Damon, Greg Kinnear. Let's never do anything that makes us look like total idiots. Stuck on you. I'm open. Rated PG-13, December 12th, only in theaters. What's that you have? A bottle. A bottle? Brilliant! What do you do with it? Well, I have found a way to fill it with authentic Guinness draft. And you drink it straight from the bottle no matter where you are? Yes! Drink beer straight from a bottle? Brilliant! What else are you working on? You know the bread we use for our sandwiches? Yes! I've concocted a machine that slices it for you! Brilliant! Brilliant! Guinness draft straight from the bottle. Enjoy it everywhere. Brilliant! <sighs> Why do I rent from Enterprise? Because having the right car or truck makes all the difference. Sweetheart, your honeydew list just got a little bit longer. Sorry. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. The sharpness of titanium. Now available in the new Remington Titanium Series. The only shaver with titanium-coated trimmer blades for a shave that's incredibly close and comfortable. 
It's closing in on you. Wait, they're multiplying. I can't see them. They're right on you. Move. Get your hands on some serious technology, like a compact Presario with the Intel Pentium 4 processor. All for just $4.99 after rebates, plus free shipping. Get what they've got. Get a compact Presario. Revenge is the enemy of all ages. I own this town. You with me? Huh? <laughs> Barry Sanders. It's like trying to catch a fly and you just can't catch the guy. A Sports Century World Premiere, Monday. 50, 40, 30, all the back A master playmaker. He is putting on a show. But on the verge of immortality. As a son, this is not the time to quit. I knew that I was walking away from something that was wonderful. Sanders said goodbye. It's still a mystery to me why he quit. Sports Century, Barry Sanders, premieres 8 p.m. Monday on ESPN Classic. Well, John Dockery on the sideline just told Jim Nance and myself that he addressed the offense as they ran off the field and said, hey, guys, we can move the ball, but we have to quit stopping ourselves. We have to quit making mistakes and letting this crowd affect us. Auburn has it first and 10 from its 24-yard line. Teapot Brown is the fullback with Danley, the tailback. Danley and a gain of five. Jim, I really believe this is going to be a 15-round fight, but the first round clearly goes to Auburn. They've done just about everything they've had to do, both running and passing. In the middle of the screen, uh, 86 is Keith McCants, the All-American lineman. Ed King comes around, but he's blocked by the, one of the tight ends there. Uh, number, I think it was number 87, Victor Hall, who blocked McCants, kept him away from the play, and that's a nice block on McCants. Three receivers in the game on second and six. A great time. Slack throws it away. Good coverage downfield. You see Greg Taylor, the Auburn man in the area, and three guys around him from Alabama. Now, a game like this, Jim, we talk so much about emotion. And the a team that can keep that emotion for four quarters, I think, is the one who's going to win this game. And oftentimes, it's much easier for the home team when they have a crowd like this of 85,000, most of them for that team. Pat Dye with a win today would have now three straight SEC titles or a part of them. The only coaches to do that, Bob Nealon, Vince Dooley, and Bear Bryant. He could join them. Third and six and a fumble. Alabama football. When I think it was Willie Wyatt early, Jim, that caused the fumble. You're going to see a tremendous charge up front by the Alabama front as the handoff. And as soon as the ball gets to Williams right there, it is stripped with a, by the left hand. I think that's Willie Wyatt. And then about three other jerseys, white jerseys, it was Suns, number 90, who ultimately made the recovery. We talked about Willie Wyatt. And now he's a nightmare for centers. And now you can see why. It looked like the freshman running back, Darrell Williams, saw Wyatt right in front of him. And there was a shaky exchange from Slack. Tried to move out of the way. First down from the 21. Stacy cutting back. What a run by Saran Stacy. George Thornton's recovery sets up Alabama right in the end of the field where the Alabama fans are gathered. Sir and Stacy, you talk to uh, their coaches, what they say about Stacy is he knows where the goal line. He doesn't waste any motion. He takes it upfield and gets the ball in. Here he is again. Stacy and a two-yard loss. Hit first by John Wiley. Ogletree over there along with Corey Barlow. And what a nice play by John Wiley, number nine, the free safety of the Auburn Tigers. Here's a man who was a corner a year ago, but they needed a guy who was a good open field tackler at free safety, so they moved Wiley there. And in this game already, he has made three plays. He stopped an inside run earlier in the game. This time, he stopped Stacy running to the outside. Second and goal from the six for Alabama. Looking to tie it up early. Hollingsworth 
And over the head of Charlie Abrams. That's a similar route that they used for a touchdown against Penn State. They found Lamont Russell when that game for a score. Well, Tennessee comes back to tie it up. But you're right, Jim. And, and again, the Auburn staff knows that Alabama likes to go to the tight end here. And there were four guys around Lamont Russell that time, the tight end. David Rocker on the field. Defensive tackle for Auburn. And with the timeout on the field, we'll come back with Alabama facing third and goal from the six. All right, here's the play. Sunday night at 8. Go to ESPN Classic. Stop at the couch, and the best sports movies of all time will be right there. Real Classics with Burt Reynolds. Where sports and movies collide. For the first time ever, join Michigan State's Bubba Smith and Notre Dame's Rocky Blyer for the exclusive rebroadcast of the Game of the Century. There was some vicious hitting going on. Classic Big Ticket, 7 Eastern Thanksgiving night, only on ESPN Classic. Shipping durability testing. Electrostatic surge simulation. Extreme environment performance analysis. Hey, hey! Structural integrity. Structural integrity. You name it, we do it. Over 11,000 hours of internal and external testing per Dell model. Harsh. But effective. Right, that's why Dell is one rock solid, reliable PC. Can you imagine? You have no idea. Call Dell today for great deals. Right now, a Dimension desktop with an Intel Pentium 4 processor is just $4.99 after mail in rebate. Inspiron notebooks are just $7.99 after mail in rebate. Plus, for a limited time, get free shipping. And now over here, the torsion chamber. Rock solid PCs. Easy as Dell. Dell PCs use Intel Pentium 4 processors. David Rocker getting his right leg attended to, and he took a real mean leg whip, really, actually, when he fell down. Right here, you're going to see David Rocker as he's trying to rush the passer. He kind of gets caught in a bunch of bodies, runs into the center of Roger Schultz, and it's his right knee. You know, Jim, it was actually the same end zone, same part of the field that his brother hurt his knee on a few years ago. His brother Tracy, winner last year of the Outland and Lombardi Trophy. Walter Tate is now in, a freshman on the defensive line, along with Fernando Horn and Lamar Rogers. Third and goal from the sixth. Hollingsworth rolling and throwing. Intended for battle. Domingo Anderson was the man guarding Marco Battle. And again, it was quick upfield pressure, really, that forced the high throw by Hollingsworth. But I tell you, thus far in the game, it's been very good pressure by the front five of Auburn that really hasn't allowed Hollingsworth much time to find any open receivers. Superb kicker, Philip Doyle, 20 of 22 on the year will attempt a 24-yard field goal out of a hold from Jeff Wall. It's good, and Alabama's first point on a field goal by Doyle. Midway through the first quarter, 7-3 Auburn. Well, thus far, it has been the surprise play has been the long pass, the 44-yard pass from Reggie Slack to Alexander Wright. Auburn has not been a big play offensive team this year, but today they feel they can get the ball deep to Alexander Wright. By the end of today, the Sugar Bowl may have to face a decision as to which team to invite to New Orleans. Be no decision of all, of course, at all, should Alabama win this game. But if Auburn wins and Tennessee wins, then it could be a three, it would be a three-way tie. Spoke yesterday with Sugar Bowl Executive Director Mickey Holmes, and he assured me there is no formula going into today. The Sugar Bowl has two representatives at the Tennessee game and two here at Auburn, including the Sugar Bowl president, Jim Flower. All of the mechanics are set up for them to make a decision, a conference call after the games involving the team selection committee of 17 people. And they will try to select the team they believe is the highest ranked team. That should Auburn win this one. Can you imagine trying to fight your way to play Miami? <laughs> Miami will be there January 1st. Alexander Wright on the return. To the 29-yard line. Oh, the pressure of this game. 
coaches know all about it, especially Bill Curry. I can be walking across the shopping center parking lot in July, and I can have an 80-year-old matriarch walk up and say, Coach, I would just like to hug you. I'm an Alabama fan. And of course, I say, well, fine. That's wonderful. I appreciate it. And then whispered into my ear is this, beat Auburn. You've got to beat Auburn. It's a constant year-round obsession here in Alabama. First and 10 Auburn from its 29-yard line. Joseph and Danley split behind Slack. Joseph on the reception. Nice move. And McCants runs him down. A gain of 14 on the completion to James Joseph. He scored the touchdown for Auburn. You know, it's really important that James Joseph has emerged as a leader of this offense. This team earlier in the year was struggling to find a leader and an identity and a personality. And James Joseph has been the guy to step forward and give this team a personality, a tough physical personality. He's a lone setback, three receivers in. Dale Overton and Shane Wasden join Greg Taylor on first and 10. Slack rifles the pass to Wasden. And Auburn is in Alabama territory. An 18-yard reception by Wasden. And Jim, what you're seeing is Auburn throwing virtually every pass to the outside because the corners are taking the inside away. So they're going to continue to run these out cuts until they take those away or rotate up. But a nice route, a precise route, run by Shane Wasden. At the Alabama 40. Reggie Slack is hot here in the first quarter. Was slip. Stacy Danley lost his footing after taking the handoff. No gain. You know, talking about Reggie Slack, you watch him the first time on film, Jim, and you really that aren't that impressed, but the more and more you watch him, the more concerned you get. He's a guy that has done an awful lot for this team, had to carry this team at times during the year. Again, a very difficult conference and a very difficult schedule. Second and ten for Auburn. Laudable by Slack. Trying the left side again. He had a man open, yep. but it was way over the head of Alexander Wright. You see, again, the out, uh, out cut. And anytime he sees that defensive corner lining up inside, he's just going to audible to the out. Slack, the all SEC quarterback a year ago. He's number two all time on the Auburn passing list behind his position coach, Pat Sullivan. 1971 Heisman Trophy winner from here at Auburn. Third down and 10. Four receivers in the game. And intended for Joseph with McCants covering. As we go down to the sidelines with John Dockery. Doc? You know, Jim, in fact, if you look behind me, you'll see David Rocker. He's just putting his right shoe back on. What happened, it looked at first, it was his knee pad, Aiden, but it was actually his ankle. They taped it up. They put a pad on it. It's bruised. He's going to try and play again. Interesting, though, with the depth on the defensive line for Auburn, they shouldn't have much problem there. Back to you guys. That's Richie Nell punting to Gene Jelks, and the fair catch is called at the 13-yard line. 27-yard punt puts Alabama inside of its own 20. Now, this is the 53rd meeting between these two. Actually, the 54th today. And Legion Field has been the site the last 40 years. But you go back to this series that started in 1893. It's also been scattered across the country or the state in Montgomery and Tuscaloosa. Back at the turn of the century. Now the give to Stacy in a gain of two. Rodgers and Horn on the tackle. You will see Gary Hollingsworth has some very interesting ball handling today. They spent a lot of time in this. Watch how he puts the ball. They don't hide the ball like most quarterbacks do. They put it there so everybody can see it. And they believe that sets up their play action passes a little bit better. And in this kind of game, you're going to see a lot of extracurricular activity. That's Prince Wembley and Eric Ramsey. Second and eight. Hollingsworth out of the shotgun. Hands it off to Stacy. 
And he's out to the 20-yard line. You know, Jim, you just mentioned an interesting thing in that when Alabama runs the shotgun in a stadium like that, this, it's even more difficult to hear the calls, particularly between the center, Roger Schultz, and Hollingsworth, the quarterback. And if you're trying to call audibles, sometimes you have to use hand signals in an environment like this. Well, the offense edge early to Auburn. They're driving at 68 yards and a touchdown on its opening possession. Third down and two. Stacy has the first down to the 26-yard line. It was a fumble on the tail end of that. And let's see. No indication. Now they're going to rule him down. And it's a first down for Alabama at the 26-yard line. All of a sudden, we have 85,000 officials, but Elton Billingsley, number 47 of the Tigers, came out with the ball. But Stacy, number 27, has a nice combination of speed and toughness. I think that should have been a fumble, Jim. That should have been a fumble recovered by Billingsley. He was still going down. First and 10 instead for Alabama. Swings it over to Stacy, and he's out to the 30-yard line. A short gain for the Tide. Stacy was still up. Take another look at the fumble, but I think Stacy was still up when the ball came loose. Watch 47 here, Pat. It looks like he walks off with the football. Yeah. There's the ball loose right yeah. there, and he's still moving forward. Then 47 Billings, he just takes it right there. That should have been Auburn's ball. A break for Alabama, and Hollingsworth calls a timeout on second and six. We're inside five minutes to go in the first quarter. 7-3, Auburn. SRX Performance Utility. Breakthrough. There's more to protecting your family this winter than making sure they're dressed warmly. You've got to make sure they're protected at home as well. And no one helps protect families better than ADT. A single ADT system can help protect your home and family from burglary, fire, and carbon monoxide. Call now and take advantage of ADT's holiday special. You could even save up to 20% off your homeowner's insurance. And you may qualify for zero down financing for installation. But you better hurry. ADT. Always there. This is titanium. One of the sharpest metals known to man. Now available in a somewhat more manageable size. The new Remington Titanium Series. The world's only shaver with the sharpness of titanium coated trimmer blades. For a shave that's incredibly close and comfortable. Remington Titanium. It could just make all other shavers obsolete. to know the people who know diamonds. Capture the moment with Zales' beautifully crafted princess cut diamond ring. Exclusively at Zales, making moments last a lifetime. With just under two minutes remaining in the first half, Alabama quarterback Gary Hollingsworth connected with wideout Marco Battle for a 19-yard touchdown. As we rejoin the action at the start of the second half, Alabama is set to receive right here on ESPN Classic. Jim Von Weil is the kickoff man for Auburn. He drives it, bouncing around from the 15, scooped up at the 4 by Jelks. Jelks out to the 32-yard line, tackled by Eric Ramsey. Gary Hollingsworth comes out onto the field, needing just nine yards to set the single-season passing record for Alabama quarterbacks. In the first half, Alabama benefited from the two Auburn turnovers, cashed it in for 10 points. Tackles for a loss. Auburn was 7-0. 
in the passing yards. Auburn early, but not in the second quarter. Only two yards passing in the second quarter. Straight out into the shotgun. And an inside give to Stacy. And down he goes. Lamar Rogers wraps him up. In the first half, Alabama punted the first time it had the football. And then a fumble set up a field goal. Turned it over of bounds. They tried on the fake field goal. And he's scoring a touchdown in the final two minutes of the half to take the lead. On second and 13, Hollingsworth flushed out, now passes. It's battle again on that slant route. He scored on it late in the second quarter. And a gain of 14. Well, a quarterback loves to see a receiver do that, come back to the football. And again, Alabama in the no-huddle offense. Now, they're unusual in their shotgun formation, Jim, in that they can run all of their offense, all of their runs, they run out of the shotgun, unlike most teams. Auburn went to a no-huddle midway through the second quarter. Now Alabama shows it. On first down, Hollingsworth across the middle and behind Lamont Russell, the intended target. Let's uh, take a look where Hollingsworth's been throwing the football. Well, you know, he said at the top of the uh, of our broadcast today, he likes to throw the ball kind of short underneath the coverage. He's been an accurate thrower coming into today. But again, it's under 10 yards has been his primary uh, area of throwing the ball. Second and 10, still out of the shotgun. Wembley in as a receiver. Three receivers in all for the tie. No flag. The pass caught. It's battle. And battle into Auburn territory at the 39-yard line. A gain of 17. Hollingsworth now has the single-season passing record for the Alabama Crimson Tide, eclipsing Scott Hunter's single-season mark. Well, this is amazing. Even with the change in receivers, they still go with no huddle. And Hollingsworth calls the play on the line. Incomplete, intended for John Casimus. Hollingsworth waving his team back to the line immediately. Sanderson set to the left. Now he'll shift to the right. And again, trying to prevent the fifth defensive back from coming in from Auburn. Second down and ten. Give it to Stacy. Turner out in front, along with Casimus. And Stacy gets near the first down. There's the man calling it. The man with the glasses, Homer Smith, offensive coordinator. He is. most innovative minds, I think, in college football. You talk about old-time Alabama people who've been watching Alabama offenses for a long time. They think highly of Homer Smith. Third and a long one. Great play action fake by Hollingsworth. Intended for Kevin Turner. Hey, if Pat Hollingsworth can fake you out, I, I lost the football on this one. He's got it, it now on his hip. And Stacy does a nice job of diving over the top. But again, it was John Wiley, number nine, pretty good coverage on Turner, that forces the 48-yard field, field goal attempt by Doyle. From the left hash mark, wall to hold. And from 48 yards, Doyle, no go. So on third and one, Alabama elects to go for the play action fake. And that's two surprising calls by Alabama. Once on the fake field goal, Jim, in the first half. And there on third and one, they try to go up top and pick it up with a throw. It's only the third field goal missed this year by Philip Doyle. He's 21 of uh, 24 now on the year. Now Auburn with the football for the first time in the second half. Darrell Williams is in at the tailback, number 45, a freshman. 
They fake to Williams. And Slack almost has it picked off. Lee Osmonds out there. Pass was short intended for Greg Taylor. There was pressure from the backside of Reggie Slack. The thing about it, if you watch Reggie Slack enough, he really has remarkable courage there in the pocket. You know, it's a tough position to play when you have a lot of big bodies coming after you. He has had that all day today, and yet he's hung in there in the pocket and delivered some nice throws. That one was, was definitely short, but he's delivered some nice throws today. Pat, you recall, he threw for nearly 100 yards in the first quarter, but he's hit on only two of his last nine, including an interception. Second and ten. Man is open. It's Wasden. He cuts back to the middle. Here comes McCants after him, and McCants got him by the foot. Unbelievable play by Keith McCants. After the 59-yard reception by Wasden. This is a great offensive play, but you have to enjoy the defensive play here of McCants. He, early on, has the tailback out of the back end of the ball. is 25, 30 yards away from McCants. And remember, he's 250 pounds. Wazden is 174 pounds. He still catches up. That is incredible. Fumbled on the tail end, but he was down. So here's the first down play. And James Joseph is upended. And again in the area, it's McCants. Another look as he cuts back. Remember, they're, right now, they're about 30 yards, well, a little longer than 30 yards apart. That's how, they, how far they started apart. Remember, that's number three, Charles Gardner, who's a defensive back. McCants is outrunning him. That's why his uh, ability has changed the nature of this Alabama defense this year. Second down and 10. Danley in now at the tailback. James Joseph in the flat and about a foot short of the goal line. A nice touch by Reggie Slack there to James Joseph. And J J uh, Reggie Slack is getting banged and hit, beat up, but still he finds a way to back off while it rushes into space, makes the ball a real easy catch for James Joseph, and now it looks like they, well, they're going to measure for the first down. Joseph was tackled by his old high school teammate, Vantrese Davis. Now, we told you this rivalry completely engulfs the whole state of Alabama. The two touchdowns of this game have been scored by high school teammates, Marco Battle and James Joseph. Now they play at separate schools, but they played together back in the prep days at Phoenix City Central High School. Well, virtually all of these players have known each other most of their lives. It is first and goal, just inches shy of that goal line. Oh, boy. Brad Johnson, the right guard, looked like he left awfully early. And that's a big play. Mm. You know, the goal line offensive linemen want to get off so quickly and so low sometimes that can happen to you particularly when you're trying to go on a quick count which it looked like Auburn was trying to do there and he was also trying to block Keith McCants he is very much on his mind two tight ends Hall and Autry Joseph and Danley in the backfield on first and goal Danley driving and about a yard and a half short. Again, it's McCants. He's everywhere, number 86. 6'4", 246. He can run a 4'5", 40. You know, it's like Don Lindsay, the defensive coordinator, says, hey, you have to let the stallion out of the stable every once in a while and let him play. And that's what they do with Keith McCants from time to time, is just let him roam from sideline to sideline. 11 tackles on the day. Well, from the play-by-play -play sheets in the press box to down on the field. What will they write here on second and goal? Joseph and a touchdown. with his 
second touchdown today. And Auburn is ahead. Rob Selby being helped off the field. He's had nagging ankle injuries on both ankles. And now comes in on the play that helps launch the touchdown for Joseph that has helped off the field. Hudson to snap it back to Chris Dickinson. And Wynn Lyle on the extra point. He's a good one. Perfect on the season on extra points. And good again. Well, Jim Auburn has been awfully good on their first drive of each half. Here in the opening drive, as James Joseph, their leader, dives into the end zone to put him Auburn ahead 14-10. Harry Sanborn has a reputation for going from girl to girl to girl. But he's about to encounter something new. I'm the mother. Jack Nicholson, Diane Keaton. What's with the turtlenecks? You never get hot? Not lately. From the director of What Women Want. God, am I sorry. Something's gotta give. Rated PG-13. In theaters everywhere, December 12th. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be light. Next year, all our troubles will be out of sight. This holiday season, put out the good stuff. Planters. College Hero. Hey, College Hero. Record breaker. Back to zero. It's courts to be run. There are games to be won. College Hero, you just begun. Introducing the icon loaded weapon and the freshman class of the first school only at Champ Sports. A master playmaker. He is putting on a show. But on the verge of immortality, Sanders said goodbye. I knew that I was walking away from something that was wonderful. Sports Century Barry Sanders premieres 8 p.m. Monday on ESPN Classic. For the first time ever, join Michigan State's Bubba Smith and Notre Dame's Rocky Blyer for the exclusive rebroadcast of the Game of the Century. There was some vicious hitting going on. Classic Big Ticket, 7 Eastern Thanksgiving night, only on ESPN Classic. I'm up in the press box. The man with me has been around Auburn football for some two decades. I know you are a happy man at this moment, David Housel. 14-10, your team on top. But the importance of this game, the significance. Auburn people today made a journey they never thought they'd make in their lifetime. And that's what means the most. Our people came home, came to Mecca, and then the promised land. And we may not win the game, but we're equal. For the first time in 50 years, we're equal. We dictate the terms where we play our home game. All right, is that your game towel? <laughs> this is a good look and a, and a sweat towel. <laughs> okay, guys, back to you. <laughs> All right, Doc, uh, the kick goes out of bounds. David Housel, the pride of Gordo, Alabama, and to really put this game in perspective, on my way to the national championship game in Seattle this year, I happened to hitch a ride with David over to the King Dome. What was he talking about? Seton Hall in Michigan? <laughs> no. He was talking about Auburn and Alabama on December 2nd. Uh, he is unbelievable. He has lived for this game for 20, 30 years. A wonderful, dedicated man. Today, uh, sure a very busy task is much of the Southeast. And the media from all across the country really has come in to watch this showdown at Jordan-Hare. I'm Jim Nance along with Pat Hayden and John Dockery. And we're early in the third quarter. Auburn leading Alabama 14-10. After the five-yard step off, a good kick by Von Weil. Jelks takes it from the goal line and is tripped by Alex Thomas at the 23-yard line. Well, now Alabama trails by four points, and if you grow up in this state and you grow up watching Alabama or Auburn play as a young man and you dream about playing in a game like this, these are the moments that you wait for. 
if you're guys like Gary Hollingsworth and Stacy and Kevin Turner and Lamont Russell being down by four and a chance to put your team ahead. Surratt Stacy to the 28 yard line and a five yard run tackled by two outside guys Billingsley and Ogletree. Ogletree's had a good game, a sack in the first half. Matt, you were talking about the fact that Ogletree has 11 sacks on the year. A couple of years ago, Andre Bruce came out of this school, and Pat Dye still says the best one he's ever had. Greg Ogletree had better stats, actually, than, than Andre Bruce. And, on, and uh, Greg Ogletree said, it's the minute we walk on this campus, we talk about team defense and effort, and that's how we play every Saturday. Second and five. The fake and the throw and the reception by Russell and a first down at the 40 yard line. You know, Lamont Russell doesn't really, you know, burst past defenders. He just kind of glides through the secondary and linebackers. His fourth catch of the day. But he doesn't have a tremendous burst, but he just has that sense of where he is and where defensive people are and settles down into those soft spots for catches like that. He has four receptions on the day for 80 yards. First down, Alabama. Stacy. And a three-yard gain into the pile that includes Ogletree and Riggins. In a game like this, every inch is important. This game means that much to these players. And you've seen running backs like Stacy, Alabama's Saran Stacy right there. Even though it was only a a three-yard gain. It probably should have been a, a one-yard gain. But that's what it means. Those extra two yards mean everything in a game like this. He has 14 rushes today, 53 yards. After five straight 100-yard games. Second and seven. Here comes the rush. Hollingsworth gets it away, incomplete. Quint Riggins was coming in on Hollingsworth, and he had to throw it away into the area of Russell. Nice play by Quentin Riggins. You know, I was talking to Quentin yesterday, and he said, hey, I look at the offensive linemen, and I think I have a read on those offensive linemen when they're going to pass and when they're going to run. I look at their hands, and if they don't have much weight on the hands and they're in a pass mode, I think pass and I defend pass. Owens Lassick in there at tailback on third and seven. Russell again, and it's another first down for the Crimson Tide. Anytime your tight end is catching that many balls, you have to make sure that you jam them at the line of scrimmage. And Wayne Hall, the defensive coordinator at Auburn, said yesterday, we've got to make sure that we jam. We can't let him off free. That's Wayne right there. He coaches his defensive lineman, and he coordinates the defense. Somewhere behind him, Jim, is his father, Mr. Hall, who comes to all the games and sits in the box. There he is. Loves those hot dogs. Three hot dogs today at halftime for Mr. Hall. <laughs> First and ten. Hollingsworth to Turner. Defender slipped momentarily. Turner fumbled the football. Recovered by Auburn. Dennis Wallace on the recovery. Wow, what a play for Auburn because Kevin Turner had made a nice catch and a nice run after the catch. And he was trying to keep his balance right before this fumble. You're going to see him put his arm down. And when that happens, it was number nine, Wiley, who first hit him. Riggins got Riggins a hand 41, on it. Riggins 41, yeah, who caused the fumble. Wow. Quentin Riggins. Auburn takes over with the football and the lead. 14-10 midway through the third quarter. Black, all kinds of time. And a flag down, Alexander Wright on the reception. He had been bumped out of bounds, Pat. Yeah, in college football, if you're bumped out of bounds, you're allowed to come in back to the field. He was bumped out. 60 yards on the play, you think it will, it will stand. Well, they're talking about it. Uh, the, uh, the uh, Pat Dye is signaling the official oh. down on the fans. but once you're bumped down in college football, unlike professional football, you're allowed to come back in. All you see him there is running out of bounds, but before he was pushed out by number five, Thomas. 
Pat, he was about four yards out of bounds after the bump. But he didn't hit the play. He didn't stop. He kept accelerating down the sideline, and Thomas did stop. So the 60-yard play sets up Auburn from the 13-yard line. Joseph to the 11. You know, Jim, I think sometimes these college guys watch so many pro games on Sunday, they forget some of their own rules. And in pro football, if you get knocked out of bounds, you can't come back in. It looked like Ephraim Thomas just stopped. You remember Devon McDonald last week trying to scoop up yeah. the fumble instead of falling on it. You exactly can't right. run the football back on a fumble once it hits the ground. You can if you recover in midair. A fumble. Now second down play. They run it with Danley and no gain. Hit by Webb. Steve Webb. That time, Ephraim Thomas was police on that side like Ephraim Zippelis. <laughs> wow, did you stay up late last night thinking about that one? <laughs> well, here we are. More Third. Than from your notes. <laughs> Third and eight here. This is a very big play for this Alabama defense. Think what's at stake. The SEC championship, perhaps a national championship attempt on January 1. And it may come down right here to this play. Third and eight. Alex Strong is the low setback. On a wing is Joseph. Slack will tuck it under. And he gets to the five, which is a yard short of the first down. Fourth and one. Thomas Rayum got him by the ankles. And Auburn now, will they kick or will they go? And Pat Dye is asking one of the team managers down by the uh, yard markers, how far is it? It's a four-point game now. You know, a team captain can always request a measurement. Surprised they don't have Reggie Slack request a measurement. It's a long one to go. And now yeah. from the sidelines, Auburn's calling for a timeout. That's the right call. And they see it in the huddle. So they call it with six minutes to go in the third quarter and Auburn leading. Introducing the first installment of the Inside X DVD series titled ESPN's X Games 9. This DVD is your backstage pass to X Games 9. It includes tons of behind-the-scenes footage with your favorite action sports athletes. On top of all the highlights and extras, this DVD also comes with a 63-minute bonus CD soundtrack featuring 16 cutting-edge tracks. See X Games 9 through their eyes. Get Inside X. I'm grinding my teeth and I have goosebumps witnessing the madness... All new in November, it's Jerry Springer, uncut and out of control, three. Come on, boy. You little punk. Non-stop, hair-raising action that will pull you over. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. It's a carnival of chaos, and it's completely uncensored. Jerry Springer, uncut and out of control, part three. The madness continues. I suspect every bride dreams of a moment like this. Now playing on pay-per-view. Home is a place where you can kick off your shoes and relax. A place where you can stay up all night and play. Home is a place where you can shut out the world. A place for families to spend time together. Home, they say, is where the heart is. And once you visit Mississippi, your heart will be here forever. Call today for your free Mississippi tour guide and start planning your trip to Mississippi. Where getting away feels just like coming home. Well, with fourth and a long yard from the five-yard line, it was either go for the touchdown or go for the win. And they went with the win. Win Lyle, that is. The place kicker, Win Lyle. So he'll <laughs> attempt a 22-yard attempt to make the difference now seven for the Auburn Tigers here in the third quarter. Dickinson will hold. Hudson will snap. Remember the block by Thomas Rayom against Penn State a few weeks ago. Lyle. Boots it through. 14 of 17 on the year. Homegrown product from Auburn, Alabama, and a senior. And it's now 17-10. Young man is a 3.66 pre-med student at Auburn. Ten points in the third quarter for Auburn after trailing by three at the half. 
start that game. Green Bay and Tampa yeah. Bay, the first game of the season. Two teams coming on. Especially Green Bay now. Here's Jelks on the return. Ooh. Boy, is he hit. This Auburn special teams coverage, including Al Nash for the second time today. Back it up the tide. It's the 16-yard line. Yeah, yeah, they are having some fun. And that's what this game should be about. That's Wayne Glitzman. For 55. Now down seven. Hollingsworth, the second ranked Alabama, comes to the line, first and ten. down. Stacy is dropped for a yard loss by Lamar Rogers. Folks, I can't tell you how loud it is here. I have been into a lot of stadiums, but it is a roar, and it has been all game. I'm standing right next to Jim Nance, and there's times I can't even hear you, Jim. in the third quarter we saw the negative plays by the Auburn defense I believe it was seven but this Auburn defense has played very well it's the turnovers that have allowed Alabama to score so back him up five yards on the procedure penalty and the pass to Russell and a good gainer to the 25 yard line 13 yards in all Wallace on the tackle The attendance figure 85,000 plus. There's a lot on that plus, too. We're at Jordan Hare Stadium in Auburn, Alabama, and the first time ever the Crimson Tide has played on Auburn soil. Jim, it's been a day, I think, of terrific defense. A couple of big plays we've seen in the passing game. Slack to right and another big pass to Shane Wasden. Seen some great linebacker play out of Keith McCann from Alabama and Quentin Riggins from Auburn. And two coaches trying to keep their Sugar Bowl hopes alive. So let's talk about that. Tennessee has won. And now 10 and 1. They finish the regular season. Pat, what's going on here at the field? Any idea at all? It's second and two right now. They may be having some problems with the uh, with the clock, Jim. Scoreboard clock indicates five minutes, 16 seconds to go in the third. And they're just mentioning a hey, Yes, they are adding time on the clock. With 12 seconds, they felt were slighted, so 528 now, they'll adjust. Well, interesting note, the entire crew, obviously, from the Southeastern Conference, they make sure that none of these officials are from either one of the schools, as you might expect. There's been some problems at other conferences this year after some controversial calls, quite honestly, where one of the referees was, in fact, from one of the universities playing in the game. But they make sure here in the Southeastern Conference that, that none of the officials come from either school. 538 to put on the clock. That win Lyle field goal broke Al Del Greco's Auburn career field goal record. And it's 17-10 Auburn here in the third. You know, it's amazing. We've talked about how much this game means. And when you talk to the young men who are the participants today, you really get a sense of it. Even, even guys like Charles Gardner, who's a guy from California for Alabama, says that he thinks about Auburn 365 days a year. Second down and two as we're back to play. Inside give to the power back, Martin Houston, and he has the first down for Alabama. Boy, tough inside play. Roger Schultz, number 66, against Richard Shea, 93. Think, don't think those guys know what's at stake? Every lineman that plays in today's game, I guarantee you, will be in the whirlpool tomorrow, Jim. It's that kind of game. First and 10 from the 28th. From the shotgun into the flats and dropped by Stacy. 
Billingsley was with him. It would have been probably only a three-yard gain. Running down that line toward the sideline. Elton Billingsley has really been one of the keys they felt today coming in today in pass coverage. But I think he's done a nice job of stopping some runs as well. They thought that he was going to have to take away the fullback and back from the flat. He's done a pretty good job today of that. Second and ten. Owens Lassick is in the game. And he makes the catch and gets to the 36-yard line. He does not go down easy. Well, you know, with so many short throws here by Gary Hollingsworth, you would think with the linebackers that tight, now they're set up perfectly to go beyond the linebackers, get the ball downfield a little more deeply to one of the wide receivers. Because those linebackers, Elton Billingsley, Riggins, Crawford, Ogletree, they are hugging the line of scrimmage. Third down and three. Back under center. Fake. And now incomplete. Intended for Russell. Wiley on the coverage. Owens Lassick, another man, was in the area. Help the heat coming in from Billingsley, the man you just mentioned, Pat. Well, Alabama will have to punt. I think Alabama's going to have to make some adjustments on offense. The running backs have caught eight passes, but now they're going to have to change gears and throw the ball downfield more. Wasden ready for the return from Bill Smith. And Anderson came in on him, but the kick is away. And we'll roll that right at the 20-yard line. 45-yard total on the punt. And we're in the final four minutes of the third quarter. I am powered by the sun. I will never stop. I am precise. I am G-Shock. Shock the world with the atomic solar G-Shock. Mr. Thompson, after hearing the evidence and listening to your testimony, this committee finds you guilty of obstruction of justice, embezzlement of company funds, and questionable accounting practices. Excuse me. Well, there appears to be some good news. Yes, sir. Well, I just saved a bunch of money on my car insurance by switching to Geico. <laughs> Thanks very much. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. The new Braun Free Glider automatically dispenses a protective shaving conditioner, reducing the risk of abrasion, giving a clean, close shave. And if you're not completely satisfied, we'll give you your money back. Braun. Designed to make a difference. <sighs> Why do I rent from Enterprise? Because having the right car or truck makes all the difference. Sweetheart, your honeydew list just got a little bit longer. Sorry. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. A jam-packed Jordan-Hare Stadium here, 85,000-plus, enjoying the fact that their home team, the Auburn Tigers, leads Alabama by seven points. And as we begin the fourth quarter, you have to wonder who has the edge. The way I see it, Auburn Tigers, they are the home team. And also, if you watch closely, they've substituted much more freely than Alabama, so they should be fresher for this quarter, guys. Especially on defense, Doc. They will be very fresh on defense. Second and 14 for Auburn now at the Alabama 47-yard line. Slack to right. And another first down. You know, football has not been real easy for Alexander Wright. Came in, was a defensive back his first couple of years at Auburn. They transferred him or, or changed him to a wide receiver. It took him a long time to get comfortable, but now in his senior year, He's playing with a lot more confidence and a lot more feel for the game, and he's had a nice day today. Six catches, 123 yards. This is a team that saw its receiving core depleted by the loss of Lawyer Tillman, Freddie Wagan, 
And now Alexander Wright steps forward today. First down from the Alabama 33. Danley breaks the tackle. Spencer Hammond tackled him, but not until Danley dashed for 20 yards. You know, character on an offensive football team starts with the offensive line, and you sense this offensive line of Alabama, I mean of Auburn, really beginning to do the job. And it's guys like Stacy Danley running behind that offensive line who refuse to quit that are making the difference as we begin the fourth quarter. Petulo and Hall with big blocks to help free him, and he was able to shake off a tackle from McCants, surprisingly. First down, Joseph. A couple of good belts in there by Sullins and Hammond, and only a yard gain. Well, 13 minutes and 38 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter, and we said just a few moments ago, this defense of Alabama has to stop Auburn here, has to come up with some sort of negative play, a turnover, because the way the Auburn defense, defense is playing, if they get down by two scores, it's going to be a very difficult fourth quarter for the tie. 13th play of the drive for Auburn. Second down and nine. Williams, the lone setback. It's Darrell Williams. Touchdown. They call Electron. Daryl Williams. And Win Lyle now with the extra point. And a 14-point lead for Auburn. And this is you stand behind the defense and try to tackle Electron Williams. This guy has some burst in him. He runs right through Charles Gardner and then over. Lee Osmond. That is a nice run by Daryl Electron Williams. Good to see what you and an Enzo Ferrari can do together. It's good to see drivers from three time zones in your rear view mirror together. It's good to show the streets of Florence where true art is together. Project Gotham Racing 2, rated E for everyone. It's good to play together. A master playmaker. He is putting on a show. But on the verge of immortality, Sander said goodbye. I knew that I was walking away from something that was wonderful. Sports Century, Barry Sanders. Premieres 8 p.m. Monday on ESPN Classic. For the first time ever, join Michigan State's Bubba Smith and Notre Dame's Rocky Blyer for the exclusive rebroadcast of the Game of the Century. There was some vicious hitting going on. Classic Big Ticket, 7 Eastern Thanksgiving night, only on ESPN Classic.
Matt Dye and the Auburn Tigers leading second ranked Alabama 24 10 in the fourth quarter 13 minutes to go. They cry out War Eagle as Von Weil drives it to Pierre Goud. The return to the 25 yard line. Tackled by Wallace. Alabama needs to get the ball to the wide receivers on the move. Intercepted and dropped. Daryl Crawford. One official is yeah. indicating he's going to rule it down as an interception. Yep. It is an interception over. Whistle dead. Boy, that last yeah, one bad. I'm not sure. Yeah, you have to have possession of the ball when you come down. Again, in the middle of your screen, number 56. Now he's in the left part now. Now right there. Uh, I think he was bobbling that ball. I do not believe that should be an interception. He did not have possession when he came down. Pat, on the second look, you can see that the ball was squirting loose. He was losing it through his elbow yeah. as he was falling to the turf. Nonetheless, it's Auburn football and a five yard step off for offsides against Alabama. So it's first and five for Auburn. Stacy Danley to the 26 yard line. Now the Alabama defenders must strip the ball carriers. You can't just afford to tackle guys, you have to strip the ball. Alabama with the longest win streak in college football since Notre Dame lost last week. Their streak is at 12. Their last loss was against Auburn a year ago. 15 to 10 Auburn victory. But now at 10 and 0, should Alabama lose today, it will be a three-way championship in the SEC. Auburn, Alabama, and Tennessee. Second and two. Danley for the first. To the 21 yard line with McCants on his back. Now, with that note, and Auburn up 14 and driving in for another score, Pat, what does this do for the Sugar Bowl picture from the SEC? Well, I think it absolutely clouds it. I mean, quite honestly, do you choose Auburn if they go on to win the team that beat Alabama? Or do you say we're going to choose the higher, highest ranked team between these two and perhaps Tennessee? Uh, I think it makes it very confusing, but they're going to have to make a decision after the game, so they can't wait for next week's polls to come out. Again, we talked to the Sugar Bowl committee yesterday. Executive Director Mickey Holmes. Williams. To the 17-yard line. And Pat, there will be a conference call after this game should Auburn hold on for victory. And remember, there is some precedence for a team going to the Sugar Bowl after losing to another team. As a matter of fact, LSU and Auburn tied a year ago, and LSU had beaten uh, uh, Auburn 7-6, to six, but Auburn went to the Sugar Bowl. So there is some precedence for it if they were to invite Alabama. It's because Auburn was 10-1 and one last year, and LSU was 8-3. and three. Second down, 8 from the 19 of Alabama. Williams to the 17. You know, I was talking to Larry Blakeney, the offensive coordinator of Auburn this week, and he says at practice time, he stands behind the defensive backs and watches his offense come at you. And he said about Darrell Williams, Electron Williams, you can hardly see him. The freshman, he's 5'9", uh, 190 pounds, and he gets lost inside among all the big bodies. Well, Arkansas trailed in this game 24-23, but has come back 
with two touchdowns and a two point conversion to go up by 14. Third down and six. Danley back in there gets the football. And he will not get the first, but a very big field goal kick coming up from Wynn Lyle. He could make the difference 17. And that, of course, means three scores would be necessary by Bill Curry's tie. And remember the block that Alabama had against Penn State. And it was Thomas Ram, who was six foot seven, who blocked the Penn State punt. Lyle from dead center on the field, 31 yard attempt. He nails it. It's 27-10, Auburn over second-ranked Alabama. Barry Sanders. It's like trying to catch a fly, and you just can't catch the guy. A Sports Century World Premiere, Monday. 50, 40, 30, holy mackerel. A master playmaker. He is putting on a show. But on the verge of immortality. I said, son, this is not the time to quit. I knew that I was walking away from something that was wonderful. Sanders said goodbye. It's still a mystery to me why he quit. Sports Century, Barry Sanders, premieres 8 p.m. Monday on ESPN Classic. We moved to Earthlink because I only want the internet that's good for them. Because they're not ready for the same internet. Because I know what he's doing online. Without bugging me all the time. There's some words I don't want him to learn. Different families, different passions, different reasons for moving to Earthlink. Call 1-800-217-0702 and get six months of dial-up service featuring Earthlink Accelerator at half price. New parental control software lets you customize features for each child. You can set time limits and even filter out websites, emails, and keywords. We moved to Earthlink because it's safe for him and I get an internet without training wheels. Create the online experience that's right for your kids with new parental control software and get six months of dial-up service featuring Earthlink Accelerator at half price. Call, go online, or visit these retailers. Move to Earthlink. It revolves around you. Let's re-emphasize at stake here today the state championship, which is first and foremost in Alabama. The SEC championship, which could end up in a three-way tie the way it's going. The Sugar Bowl birth from the SEC, that, that is very much up in the air at this point and national championship implications a loss by Alabama obviously eliminates the tide but an Auburn win would keep Notre Dame in the picture and I also believe it would benefit Michigan Miami's not happy right now I guarantee you Von Weil kicks to good from the four Hit by Stan Kunis at the 26-yard line. Tomorrow, the National Football League continues on CBS. Dick Buckus with the story on Tim Harris from Green Bay. The Packers. Boy, what a story they've been this year in the NFL. But later on, we'll have regional coverage, including the Eagles-Giants contest and Green Bay against Tampa Bay. The Rams and the Cowboys, the Saints and Lions, San Francisco, Atlanta, or Washington Phoenix. From the shotgun, Alabama must score quickly. Almost intercepted by Billingsley. You know, Alabama has thrown so many short passes, those linebackers are just squatting right there. there there's very little space, very little air on those shorter throws now. But that should mean, Jim, that there's something open behind them for a crossing route to one of the wide receivers. Second and ten. To Turner. Just a short gain is all. And you know, up by three scores, Auburn is. They're going to keep everything in front of them. They're happy to give that kind of pass to Alabama. Conversely, Alabama has to hit a receiver who's on the move, who has a chance to cut across the grain and make a big play. Third down and eight.
to Turner. First down, wow. Alabama. What a nice adjustment by Turner. A great touch by Gary Hollingsworth. These games are fun because in this kind of game, there's no quit in any athlete on the field today. That was a 15-yard gain. Out of the hurry-up offense, Hollingsworth ready for the snap back to him. And another reception. And this time it's his high school teammate, Greg Sanderson, with late, a flag down. Late flag, but again, that's just what we said. If the linebackers are playing that close to the line of scrimmage, your wide receivers should be open downfield, Jim. You see Hollingsworth look over to Sanderson. Face mask, five-yard face mask. Tacked on to the end of the run, be first down ten. As he runs downfield, Hollingsworth looks to his left and to Greg Sanderson, gave him a little wink. They've been playing together since high school. Now the ball's at the 29-yard line. Sanderson was open, but Hollingsworth was past the line of scrimmage to the 25. It's Homer Smith now standing up. And now he's thinking again, I've got to get the ball downfield. Three scores down. We can't just dig it, possess it anymore. We need big chunks of yardage now. Battle has scored the lone touchdown for Alabama. He's at the top of your screen. Sanderson to the left. Across the middle, caught by Russell. Oh, Wiley came over. I thought he might make a stab at the interception, but it's a first down, 11 yards on the play. 7.56 left in the game. And Alabama driving. Now the lob to battle. He caught it. Touchdown. A terrific pump fake by Gary Hollingsworth allowed battle to go right by Eric Ramsey. That's a heads up play by Gary Hollingsworth. Now Alabama will just go with the point after. Philip Doyle. They wasted little time on that possession. Doyle's kick is good. Only took a minute 45 seconds to drive it for the score. Pat, what about this one, the battle? Yeah, and li the little things help you win big games, but the little thing here was a pump fake by Gary Hollingsworth that drew the right there. That drew the corner, Ramsey up, and allowed battle to go behind him. And again, nice touch by the throw by Hollingsworth. They're as close as two brothers can be. What could possibly come between them? Well, what do we have here? Hey, you guys are stuck together. Hey, don't you walk away from me. Yeah, you better run. From the directors of There's Something About Mary. Oh, oh, oh. You guys are fun. Stuck on you. Hey, what's the four-letter word for snatch? Grab. All right. Right. Oopsie. Rated PG-13, December 12th, only in theaters. Most people will tell you the market opens at 9.30 a.m. It depends on which market you're talking about. It's all about the details. The after-hours conference call. Complacency. Complacency is an investor's worst enemy. You have to have the will. The ability. The discipline. The foresight. To adapt. I've been with Smith Barney for 27. 11. For 18 years. Because we work in the manner that best suits our clients' needs. Smith Barney. This is who we are. This is how we earn it. to know the people who know diamonds. Celebrate the moment with Zales' exquisitely designed diamond bracelet. Exclusively at Zales, making moments last a lifetime. It was a dull day. You know, a snore. When all of a sudden, something knocked at the door. It was the cat in the hat. And just like that, there appeared really cool fun from Radio Shack. Oh, 
only the Shack has these cool toys. The Cat Slow Car, the Fish Flashlight, and Special Edition Zip Zaps. Their day turned wild and they never look back, thanks to the Cat in the Hat and his toys from the Shack. Toys sold separately, batteries not included. At Radio Shack, Dr. Seuss's The Cat in the Hat in theaters November 21st. Well, Pat, with 7.51 to go, do you kick the onside kick here or kick it away? I think you kick it away and play defense. The onside kick is such a low percentage play that you give Auburn too good a field position. Rely on your defense. That's what they'll do. It comes to Anderson. And he's out of bounds near the 25. Man, Skippy right in on that tackle. You know, Bo Jackson early in the game, that fight that we saw earlier, said to strap those television sets down. That's right. He wasn't kidding, was he? And a penalty on the on the Pat. return, Pat, being stepped off against Auburn. Wow, and that is a big play for Alabama fans. But now it. it it's really important for this defense. They cannot afford to allow Auburn even one first down, Jim. And I tell you, this is such an important game. You know, Rob Selby's come back into the game, and he's got bad ankles and bad knees for Auburn, number 78, the tackle. That's what this game means. Even if you're hurt and you're banged up and you're bruised, you play in this game with 746 remaining. First and 10 from the 12. Danley, a two-yard gain is all, hit by Willie Wyatt. Alabama has all three of its timeouts left. Auburn used one in this half. And so often you see so many offensive teams become so conservative in situations like this. Yes, Auburn has a 10-point lead, but they've gotten that by being aggressive on offense. Second down and nine. Well, Pat, here you go. The pass caught and a first down. Alexander Wright. And you are right on the money. You give Pat Sullivan, who calls the pass plays for Auburn, a lot of credit. This takes some courage down here. But this is what you have to do. You have to have confidence in your seniors, guys like Reggie Slack, who know he's, knows he's going to get hammered after he throws the ball, but he throws it beautifully to right for the big first down. George Thornton buried him into the turf after he released the football. But Slack's okay, and it's a first down for Auburn. Joseph now the tailback. No game. Sullins on the tackle. Arkansas with that victory now will march on to Dallas with a 10 and 1 record in the Cotton Bowl. But that other spot is not so certain at this point. You know, yeah. some were wanting to give it to Tennessee, but again, that decision could be coming up after the game from the Sugar Bowl committee. They may have to choose yeah. between Alabama and Tennessee. Quite honestly, Jim, I will be surprised if Alabama doesn't get the invite, even if Auburn wins. Second and 11. And another timeout used by Slack. Auburn left with only one. Six minutes to go in the game, and it's a 10-point Auburn lead. SRX Performance Utility. Breakthrough. 
There's more to protecting your family this winter than making sure they're dressed warmly. You've got to make sure they're protected at home as well. And no one helps protect families better than ADT. A single ADT system can help protect your home and family from burglary, fire, and carbon monoxide. Call now and take advantage of ADT's holiday special. You could even save up to 20% off your homeowner's insurance. And you may qualify for zero down financing for installation. But you better hurry. ADT. Always there. This is titanium. One of the sharpest metals known to man. Now available in a somewhat more manageable size. The new Remington Titanium Series. The world's only shaver with the sharpness of titanium coated trimmer blades. For a shave that's incredibly close and comfortable. Remington Titanium. It could just make all other shavers obsolete. From Enterprise because having the right car or truck makes all the difference. Sweetheart, your honeydew list just got a little bit longer. Sorry. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. You only hear sounds like this when it's Alabama and Auburn playing for just about everything. <laughs> Second down coming up, second and 11 for Auburn, with six minutes to go and leading by 10. They brought back in Electron, Darrell Williams, he gets the pitch, cuts back but gains only a yard. There's McCants. At the conclusion of this game, we'll be selecting a Chevrolet Most Valuable Player of the Game from each team, and Chevrolet will donate a check for $1,000 to the General Scholarship Fund of each school. That, that's going to be a hard pick, too, Jimmy, because there's a lot of players that have played their hearts out today. That with a third and 11. The first down means you're going to get the football for about another two minutes. So this is of prime importance right now for Alabama. Alabama will get the football back. The pass intended for Alexander Wright. And remember, Alabama is going to get some reasonable field position as the Alabama defense stops Auburn for the first time this half. There you see, yeah. prior to this possession, touchdown field goal, touchdown field goal. So Bill Curry's decision not to go for the onside kick turned out to be the right one. Barefooted boot. To Jelks, looking for the right side. Oh, the seam. I thought there might be a yeah, clip, but there's no down. flag. Out of bounds at the 31-yard line. The scoring started with Jane Joseph on the first possession of the game. Scoring for Auburn. Alabama's Doyle kicked the field goal. Then battle just before the half. Gave Alabama the lead, 10-7 at the intermission. But in the third, Jason Joseph, his second touchdown. And Lyle's field goal. And then Williams made it 24-10. Another field goal, 27-10. And then a touchdown by Alabama. It's 27-17 right now. Kevin Turner gets to the 38-yard line where he's buried by Corey Barlow. You know, Jim, some teams aren't good at running two-minute offenses, but Alabama, this is their normal offense, really. We, they ran this in the first half. They ran it in the third quarter. So this is not an unusual offensive system for them. Second and five. Hollingsworth caught at midfield by Sanderson and a first down. A gain of 11. And again, they need two scores. They need the field goal and the touchdown. So you'll settle for either one, perhaps, on this drive. All three timeouts remaining for Alabama. Ball is batted away by John Wiley. Corey Barlow in there, too. Yeah, Wiley tipped it first. 
that John Wiley has had one great game. He's made tackles, he's supported the run, he's made tackles outside, he's defended passes, he's tipped balls. Hollingsworth drove his team just a little more than a minute, 40 seconds last time they had the football. Can he do it again? Second down, 10. They fake to Stacy. Hollingsworth has the football running free to the Auburn 40 yard line, and I think he has yeah. another first down. He did get the first, picked up a nice little block there, a screen block by Prince Wimbley, the wide receiver, ran right behind that for the first down. This six foot four quarterback grew up as an Auburn fan, used to come down here to two or three Auburn home games a year. His brother Ryan graduated from Auburn this spring. Most of his family are Auburn people. But probably not today, yeah. Brett. First and ten. With Ogletree rushing the pass to battle. And he slides for the catch. About a yard short of the first down. And the clock is moving. Again, which means that the next time, if Alabama scores the next time, I think Bill Curry will have to go for the onside kick the next time, Jim. And they've got all three timeouts remaining, and they're moving it so quickly and efficiently. Second and one. First down on the completion to Saran Stacy. You know, when you need two scores, you'd much prefer to get the touchdown first. Because then if you get the ball back, you can try at least try a long field goal to town. So Alabama has to be thinking touchdown first here. Last minute substitution. Owens Lassett comes in for Stacy. First and ten. Pass to the sideline. Again, it's battle. And man, is Alabama impressive right now. Yeah, and this was set up earlier when they threw so many passes to the backs. The linebackers are still hovering around the line of scrimmage, and there's a lot of space for the wide receivers to work. All kinds of cushions out there, and Hollingsworth is exploiting them. Second down and one. They run it for the first. I'm not sure they got it. Kevin Turner was the ball carrier. You know, just to stop the clock, Hollingsworth can ask the official for a measurement and stop the clock. And he should be up there asking for it. Apparently, they're about a foot shy. They have to get near the 15-yard line, not all the way to it, for the first. It's third down and less than a yard. Across the middle. Oh, pass interference, I thought. No interference oh. called. Pat Casmus was the intended receiver. Looked like he got hit early. Yeah, it looked like Anderson, 13, was over Casmus very early. Now the question, with you needing two scores, do you go ahead and kick the field goal now? Well, let's take a look. Was this interference? Oh, yeah, that, I think he went right through him. I think that has to be a pass interference call. And, it looks like they're going to go for it. I'm surprised they didn't run the ball there on third and one with three timeouts. They could have run for the first down and then called the timeout. Auburn makes a last second substitution. Shea in, Wallace out. Fourth and a foot. And Martin Houston picks up the first down. He and didn't have it boy. after the first hit, Pat. What a great run by Martin Houston because he was stopped. He was getting pushed back but refused to stop. They stop the clock to move the chains. First and goal now inside of the oh, 10. And Auburn calls a timeout. That's, that's Auburn's last timeout. No timeouts remaining for Pat Dye and the Tigers, who are trying to hold on here. All right, here's the play. Sunday night at 8. Go to ESPN Classic. Stop at the couch. And the best sports movies of all time will be right there. Real Classics with Burt Reynolds. Where sports and movies collide. For the first time ever, join Michigan State's Bubba Smith and Notre Dame's Rocky Blyer for the exclusive rebroadcast of the Game of the Century. There was some vicious shit going on. Classic Big Ticket, 7 Eastern Thanksgiving night, only on ESPN Classic. When is a diet pill worth $153 a bottle? When you're more than 20 pounds overweight and every diet plan has failed. 
Now there's Leptoprin. Specifically developed for the significantly overweight, backed by two United States patents, two published clinical trials, and an ironclad 100% money-back guarantee. Leptoprin is simply the most powerful clinically proven weight control compound available, period. If you're one of those people who constantly worry about five or six vanity pounds, Leptoprin is not for you. Leptoprin is much too expensive and much too powerful for the casual dieter. But if you're one of the millions of Americans who are 20, 30, 50 pounds or more overweight, you need Leptoprin. So when is a diet pill worth $153 a bottle? When it works, really works. Call toll-free 1-800-546-1170 to order your risk-free supply of Leptoprin. That's 1-800-546-1170. Meanwhile, first and goal from the nine, trying to line up the Sugar Bowl people. Here's Hollingsworth, throw, just out of the arms and outstretched fingers of Marco Battle. What a fitting final quarter to a game like this. When a game means as much to players as this particular game means to these guys, we live with this game 365 days. You, you expect great plays, and we've seen a lot of them today. Second and goal. They run it with Houston. And he's tackled at the five-yard line by Quentin Riggins. Wiley and Walter Tate in there, too. Clock is running with 2.10 left in the game. Now Bill Curry's got a lot of decisions ahead of him. Does he try to score the touchdown here? And does he go, if he does, does he go for one or two? Now third and goal. Hollingsworth. Incomplete. And no flag. Now with the fourth down, Pat, you need two scores. I think you got to kick the field yeah, goal. I think you have to kick the field goal here. If it were fourth and one, maybe you think about it, but you need the two scores anyway. And he sends out the field goal unit. Philip Doyle is the kicker. We've talked about his great numbers on the year. Tough angle, though, Jim, from the right hash mark that close. 23 yards the distance from the right side, right center. This to stay alive. And it's good. 27-20. Auburn with 1.49 to go. And Alabama with all three timeouts left. Well, now I believe they're going to have to attempt the onside kick. It's one of the lower percentage plays in all of football. You, you recover these about 15% of the time. But I think it's the key thing on these onside kick attempts, though, Jim, is that the kicker get two bounces. And then on the, after the second bounce, you get the high hop. Again, we heard John Dockery a few moments ago trying to track down Jim Flower, the Sugar Bowl president. They're right now on a conference call, and they're not going to make the decision until the game is over as to which team they would take should Auburn win this game. It would be either Auburn. Tennessee or Alabama, but most likely Alabama or Tennessee. We were hoping to get him down and get the latest status, but they're conferring at the moment. And let's remind you that the Heisman Trophy ceremonies are coming up just a few minutes away. We'll be taking you to the Downtown Athletic Club in New York. Greg Gumbel and James Brown will be there today. We name the winner. The Heisman on, Trophy. Yeah, Andre Ware, Anthony Thompson, and Major Harris. That's my, my predictions. One, that's the that's, that's the try effect that's my ballot, yeah. Okay. It, well, is there any doubt now? <laughs> and the kicker is Alan Ward. He was a high school 
All-America field goal kicker. Now, this is a huge kick. Ball was caught. It appeared after the second bounce. I thought it was number 15. Auburn has the football. And it was the backup quarterback. Yeah. Frank McIntosh. Frank McIntosh. <laughs> Even the quarterbacks get in there and mix it up. It's still not over with the three timeouts remaining for Alabama. But they cannot allow Auburn to have even one first down. Then the game's over. So they, they must stuff them three straight plays using all of their timeouts. What was your exact order of finish for the Heisman? Well, after repeating it, yeah. I got it already. What was your, I was trying to. No, Andre Ware, Anthony Thompson, and Major Harris. Now flags fall. I think Tony Rice will be in the top three. Do you? I do. I still think he'll be in the top three. I look forward to finding out. For the ball snap, movement by an offensive lineman. Oh, still that's got it. First down. A significant step off there against Auburn when you're most likely going to keep it on the ground. You back them up five yards. 147 to go, and it's first and 15. First game ever. On Auburn turf between Auburn and Alabama. Danley. Oh. And he went out of bounds, but picked up big yardage all the way to the 42 yard line, but he did stop the clock. And he got two nice blocks one by his right guard, Mark Rose, and the other by a wide receiver. Shane Wazden, number eight. Game 10 on the play, and that put Danley over 100 for the game. 24 carries, 105 yards. Now, the, the carry, however, did not pick up the first down. And going out of bounds, Pat stopped the clock. Second down and five. down and what a block by the center John Hudson and Ed King the left guard timeout on the field we'll take one as well Auburn leading second ranked Alabama have yourself a merry little Christmas let your heart be light next year all our troubles will be out this holiday season, put out the good stuff. Planters. Look, I can't give both you guys my number. Great, then I'll just grab a pen. We'd appreciate that, Jeff. So you guys are close? Oh yeah, we're like brothers. I'd do anything for that guy. Just phone. Hey, Sharon. No, your fiance just stepped away. He's thinking about you right now. I'll tell him. Later. Smirnoff Ice Premium Malt Beverage. Intelligent nightlife. You know it. The moment you see it. The moment you feel it. The United States has shocked Portugal. A play. A comeback. Jennifer Capriano. An upset so big. The most shocking, unbelievable, so unforgettable. All is well in the land of the champion. It's more than a game. It's an instant classic. And there's only one place you can find it. ESPN Classic. Jim Nance, Pat Hayden, John Dockery from Jordan Hare Stadium on the Auburn campus. 136 remaining. And Stacey Danley has had an outstanding career against Alabama. He's over 100 today. Just a few yards shy of the 100-yard total last year. And eclipsed 100 yards two years ago. First and 10, Auburn. Danley. A brilliant run to the 20-yard line. 
A gain of 14, and Alabama now calls its second timeout and is left with only one. You know, Pat Dye grew up as a lineman, played guard at Georgia, and he has always felt that linemen win games in the fourth quarter. And that's what's happened here. Pat Dye and his offensive linemen and defensive linemen have put this game away in the fourth quarter. And for these seniors at Auburn, Jim, first time in history a group has beaten Alabama four times in a row. And Reggie Slack was part of it. Well, if Pat Dye and his Auburn Tigers hold on, these seniors will go out in style. Four straight times over Bama. And all kinds of marks. Not only that, but Pat Dye will join three other coaches as the only ones to have won three straight SEC titles or pieces of the crown, joining Bob Nealon, Vince Dooley, and Bear Bryant. First and ten. Danley for no game. We think David Housel's towel is wet now. Last timeout call by Alabama. I have an intruder in my house. You don't understand. I'm dating your daughter. <gasps> You're dating my daughter? Now, who would have thought that would be worse news? <laughs> this holiday season. Mom! Did she say mom? The Ultimate Bachelor. Did you take any Viagra? Deep Viagra. <laughs> because I put nitroglycerin into your dress. The combination could be fatal. <laughs> Is about to meet his match. <laughs> Something's gotta give. Rated PG-13 in theaters everywhere December 12th. It's good to see what you and an Enzo Ferrari can do together. It's good to see drivers from three time zones in your rear view mirror together. It's good to show the streets of Florence where true art is together. Project Gotham Racing 2, rated E for everyone. It's good to play together. This is titanium. One of the sharpest metals known to man. Now available in a somewhat more manageable size. The new Remington Titanium Series. The world's only shaver with the sharpness of titanium coated trimmer blades. For a shave that's incredibly close and comfortable. Remington Titanium. It could just make all other shavers obsolete. One minute, 22 seconds to go. Alabama has exhausted all of its timeouts. And Auburn has the football and the lead. Ball is at the 20-yard line. Coach Pat Nye was moved this week by a letter written to him, the letter from a World War II veteran and prisoner of war, Mr. Jim Fennell, now 73 years old from Trinity, Alabama. He wrote the coach about commanding respect in the face of adversity, about teamwork and fellowship, and a touching story about a fellow soldier who died in his arms. Now the second down play. McCants on the tackle after a three-yard gain. Coach Dye read the letter to his team on Thursday and brought tears to many of their eyes. Pat Dye, in fact, contacted this man on Thursday night and promised to take him to the Auburn Bowl game. He was really moved by that, Pat. He was talking about it Thursday night. He was still misty-eyed Thursday night. And again, he said, and we heard him early in the broadcast say that the fact that Alabama is finally here is more important to the, than the outcome of this game. Well, he's going to get the win besides the fact that Alabama is here for the first time. 40 seconds to go. This is a third down play. Slack throws. Boy, can you believe it? It was batted down by Spencer Hammond. And it stops the clock. Well, and now, Win Lyle is actually going to come out and attempt a field goal. Pat, how do you how do you do that? I mean, how do you put the ball in the air when you're two snaps away from running it out? Yeah, with 37 seconds remaining, you could just run the clock out. It's uh, it was a silly call, actually. 
So now when Lyle comes in for a 34 yard attempt should he miss it Alabama will have the football and a chance to drive it with just seconds remaining. Lyle's kick. It's good. That'll do it. College Hero. Hey, College Hero. Record breaker. Back to zero. It's courts to be run. There are games to be won. College Hero, you just begun. Introducing the icon loaded weapon and the freshman class of the first school only at Champ Sports. Hey, what is it? I realize I love you, but as long as you're with Jessica, there can never be anything between Listen, us. Cassie, there's no need to cry. Besides, I've got really great news. You're leaving Jessica. No. I just saved a load of money on my car insurance by switching to Geico. I saved. I thought that meant something to you. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. From playing with fire. He was going to come after you. To a reputation up in flames. Sprewell is going to be scarred for that forever. Sports Century. Latrell Sprewell. A Monday world premiere. 8 p.m. December 1st. Only on ESPN Classic. For the first time ever, join Michigan State's Bubba Smith and Notre Dame's Rocky Blyer for the exclusive rebroadcast of the Game of the Century. There was some vicious hitting going on. Classic Big Ticket, 7 Eastern Thanksgiving night, only on ESPN Classic. 30-20, Auburn over Alabama. A grade A matchup. And the 11th ranked Tigers about to up in. Previously unbeaten and second rank, Alabama. Von Weil to kick for Auburn. Keeps it on the ground. Scooped up. Derek Warren has it for Alabama. Now just 29 seconds left. Let's tell you the Chevrolet most valuable players of the game. Alexander Wright from Auburn. Seven receptions, 141 yards today. They opened up the air game with Reggie Slack. And from Alabama, Keith McCants, 19 tackles and an interception. A check in the amount of $1,000 will be donated by Chevrolet to each school's general scholarship fund to further assist qualified students in all chosen academic fields. Where throws it away. It's been an amazing game. Started out very much as a defensive game, then it became a game of big plays. Sugar Bowl will have to make a decision after this game. It'll be a three way tie, season's end now in the SEC. Auburn, Alabama, and Tennessee will share the conference title. The guys from New Orleans have the pick. They'll make the call some point tonight. And now while here, Alabama's national championship hopes are dashed. There are others who will benefit by this, Pat, including Notre Dame. Notre Dame's formula to stay in the championship hunt was Auburn to beat Alabama, and then the SEC champion to beat Miami in the Sugar. And Notre Dame must beat Colorado in the orange. Yeah, I think that's a big F. That's going to be a very tough game for Notre Dame. Here's Hollingsworth now. Lopping it up in Wallace with the interception. Stands. 
too much celebration. So it's the penalty. But they have a right to celebrate. The Heisman Trophy Award coming up next. Bill Curry comes in with 10 wins, no losses, but still now walks away with his first loss of the year and has not beaten Auburn. The Auburn Tigers have done it. They've waited for this series to one day come to their home soil. They win it 30 to 20 over Alabama. Up next, the Heisman Trophy Show. It's Jim Nance with Pat Hayden and John Dockery saying CFA College Football has been a presentation of CBS Sports. The world premiere.